Hello Summoners and welcome back to another Pro Guys episode. My name is Nathan Ng and today's video will be our guide for Caitlyn, the Sheriff of Piltover. Most of the guides that we make are for new champions. Obviously, it helps a lot to have some sort of starting point for picking up something fresh. But the thing is, it's not just new champions that people need help with learning. Caitlyn has been in the game for over a decade now, and while her kit hasn't changed all that much, a lot of people really don't understand how to use her. There are some pretty cool tips and tricks in here, so make sure you stay tuned. She has a lot of range, making her a strong lane bully. She also scales really well, being one of the best 6 item ADCs in the game. Mechanically speaking, Caitlyn isn't all that complicated, but there are some cool things that you can do. But even with all of that, her stats aren't even impressive. Her popularity is super high, with both her pick rate and ban rates being about 20% each, making her the highest presence marksman in the game. But her win rate on the other hand is just under 50% across all ranks, and barely over it in plat plus. So if Kaylin is objectively a good champion, and she's mechanically not even that hard to play, what's the deal? The issue is that Kaylin is a very macro heavy champion, and most people just queue up and just go on autopilot when playing League. So in this video, we'll be going over the do's, and more importantly, the don'ts, when it comes to Caitlyn. So, you can succeed where many others fail. But before we even get to the main course of today, I just want to take a minute to remind you that, while meta videos and our other content like this are a great way to pick up some quick tips, if you're super serious about improving, you should head over to ProGuides.com. Our coaching staff is made up of top level players, and they're available 24-7, so it's always a good time to stop by. And just for $7.99 a month, you can take your Pro Guides experience to the next level. Our premium sub gives you access to all of our courses and bootcamp content, and we'll even throw in a 10% coaching discount. If you're ready to take your gameplay to the next level, trust me, it's worth every penny. Now, let's take an in-depth look at Caitlyn. In case you aren't familiar with Caitlyn's kit, we'll start out by talking about what she does. Caitlyn's passive is Headshot. Her attacks generate a stack of count on attack, doubled when attacking from a brush. At 6 stacks or 5 when in brush, her next basic attack consumes all stacks to become a headshot. Headshots empower Caitlyn's attack to have an uncancelable windup and deal bonus damage based on level, critical strike chance, and her bonus AD. This bonus damage is increased against non-champions. Enemies that step on a Yordle Snap Trap or are hit by a 90 caliber net or her E grant an additional headshot against them at an increased range of 1300 within the next 1.8 seconds. Attacking this way doesn't consume all of your count stacks. Caitlyn's Q is Piltover Peacemaker. She fires a piercing shot in the target direction that deals physical damage to the first enemy it passes through, after which it expands in width but only deals 50% damage to enemies it hits after. Enemies revealed by Yordle Snap Trap always take full damage from Piltover Peacemaker. Her W is Yordle Snap Trap. Caitlyn sets a visible trap at the target location that is untargetable and arms after 1 second, placing a trap grant sight of the area for 1 second. When an enemy champion steps on the trap, they are rooted for 1.5 seconds, revealed for 3 seconds, and become immune to further Yordle Snap Traps for 3 seconds. This ability works on a charge system. Depending on the rank, you can hold between 3 and 5 traps at a time. This number is also equal to how many you can place at a time. If you have the maximum number of traps on the ground and place a new one, the oldest one will break. Caitlyn's E is 90 caliber net. Caitlyn fires a net in the target direction, and the recoil causes her to dash in the opposite direction. The net deals damage to the first enemy hit and slows them by 50% for one second. It's really important to note that compared to the other mobility spells, this one is a lot less reliable for getting out of danger if you use it late. It isn't instant like Lucian's and Dane's dashes, nor can it be used to buff your CC like Tristana's and Ezreal's escapes. If you start casting it and get hit by any type of immobilizing or grounding effect, the net will still go out putting it on cooldown and you will remain right where you are. You have to use it before the foe actually gets to you. Caitlyn's ultimate is Ace in the Hole. Caitlyn locks onto the enemy target champion and channels her one second, revealing them as well as revealing herself. Once she completes the channel, she fires a homing bullet towards the target and deals damage to the first enemy champ hit. This ability is often thought of as a finishing move, and in some cases, it's totally fine to be used that way. But you should also see the value in using it before the fight even happens. This is especially useful against assassins. If you ult them right before a fight breaks out, it makes it much riskier for them to try to jump in and do any damage. Just make sure that you're doing it right before there aren't any tanky foes nearby to take it for them. Alright, now that we've laid out each individual ability, let's talk about how it works together as a kit. With her super long range and excellent zone control, Caitlyn is both a very powerful lane bully as well as one of the best scaling champions in the game. Rather than being a super mechanical champion, most of her skill expression is shown via smart ability usage. A lot of other hyper carries have some sort of steroid for their range, attack speed, or AD. In later fights, they just press their buttons and right click. But with Caitlyn, it's all about her baseline high range and her headshots. To maximize damage, you need a trap placement and the mindfulness to dip into bushes to get off as many headshots as you can. And then there's also her E. 
Landing E on a foe gives you another big headshot, but using it offensively means that you no longer have it as an escape tool, and you have to be a bit cautious about it. The last thing to go over before we get into Caitlyn's laning phase are her combos. Well, really, Riot tried to get rid of all of Caitlyn's fancy combos because they hate fun. So, really, you're just buffering her spells cast by using Net, then casting either Q or W at the same time. Her EQ combo is the easier one to pull off. If your foe is running at you, adding a Q to your E gives you a bigger chunk of damage on your disengage. Using a trap instead takes a bit more precision. You'll have to net, then get to your cursor just in front of your opponent, so that way the net hits them and they walk into the trap immediately after. This gives you two headshots on the target since you can no longer immediately double headshot. The best way to do damage to a target that falls for the setup is to auto once, then Q while they are rooted, then land your second auto. This is easily enough damage to 100-0 squish your foes in the mid to late game. Okay, now let's talk about Caitlyn's early game. There isn't anything crazy here. As I just went over, there aren't any fancy combos to make it complicated. Not anymore. You're really just applying basic concepts and weaving in your Q when it does the maximum damage, as well as getting as many headshots as you can, but doing it more aggressively with their high range. Every time your foe moves up to CS, you lean in a bit and hit them with an auto attack. With good auto spacing, they don't really get to trade back since they're still waiting for their auto attack timer from CSing. If they try to aggressively chase, you have your EQ to escape and deal a big chunk of damage to them. All this trading power makes it very easy to dominate lane as Caitlyn, but here's where most people make a big mistake. When you're the stronger laner, it's super tempting to just permish up the lane and chip away at the target to poke your foes as they struggle with CS. This sometimes helps you generate an even bigger lead, but it also leaves you susceptible to jungle ganks. If your jungler is playing bot side or the enemy jungle is a champion without much early game presence, you're fine to do this. But if that's not the case, there's a safer option that allows you to abuse your early game strength. Instead of shoving to the enemy turret, set up a freeze on your side of the lane. You won't be getting turret plates this way, but you do deny your enemy more CS and can safely take trades without ever worrying about being baited into jungle ganks. Okay, so now that we've talked about how to really abuse Caitlyn's laning phase to generate a lead, let's talk about what you do with it. The first instinct most people have when they're strong in the mid game is to force fights and get more kills. And with some carries, that's absolutely the right call. You force fight or play for picks, and then take objectives after. But with Caitlyn, you want a more tactical approach. Remember, Caitlyn doesn't really have the means to force fights. She's more focused on zone control. Instead of just running down opponents, you want to shove waves, set up a wall of traps at the enemy turret to prevent them from going in without taking big chunks of damage, and chip away at the tower. In neutral objectives, it's the same thing. You won't just brute force to a win by right clicking. Get there before the monster spawns and set up a line of traps to entirely block off the jungle ramps. It's good to get this done ahead of time, so you can start generating more trap charges that you can use later in a fight if it happens. Though a lot of the time, if you set up well beforehand, the enemy team finds it difficult to find a way in. If a fight does break out, it's pretty simple. Kaelin is a front-to-back champion. You shouldn't almost never find yourself flashing or gale forcing into a fight to kill the backline carries. Just hit what's in front of you with the priority on playing safe. You get bonus headshot sacks when you attack from a brush, so when these river fights happen, try to kite towards them and use them to your advantage. And one last little tip, Caitlyn's W has a pretty obvious animation. So instead of just using it once a foe's already on you, try to place one in a brush or around a corner behind you. That way, if an opponent is chasing you down in a fight, you can kite towards it and they'll walk right into it. You can also cancel the W animation from Caitlyn's side if you auto attack as soon as you put down your W. Now that we've talked about how to play Caitlyn, let's finish things off by talking about how to build her. We'll start off with a cookie cutter build and then go from there. For your runes, take Fleet Footwork, Presence of Mind, Legend Bloodline, Coup de Grasse, Absolute Focus, and Gathering Storm. I know Inspiration Secondary is probably what you're running on ADCs, but trust me, the scaling power in these two secondaries is going to give you way more carrying power than a slightly better laning phase. For your stat runes, bring Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and Health. For your items, start with the Doran's Blade, Rush Berserker's Grease, and then work towards Gale Force. Your second item is going to be either Rapid Fire Cannon or the Collector. RFC is better in general as it gives more poking power with that extra range, giving you a better siege in the mid game, as well as better DPS against tankier foes. But if you're snowballing hard and the enemy team is mostly squishy champions, Collector can give you a huge spike. Your third item should always be Infinity Edge, and your last two will be Bloodthirster and Lord Dominic's regards. Most people go LDR before BT, but a lot of the time, that may not be the right call. If the enemy team is super tanky, you may need it, but most of the time, the sustain from BT outweighs the damage increase. What we just went over is a typical go-to build for Caitlyn, but there are some variations that you may need to make based on the team comps. Gale Force is overall the best on Caitlyn, but if the enemy team has a super beefy frontline and you're the only champion with reliable DPS for bringing them down, you may need to opt for Kraken Slayer instead. In that case, it's also a good idea to consider Lethal Tempo over Fleet and definitely bring Cut Down over Coup de Grasse. And that about wraps things up for our guide to Caitlyn, the Sheriff of Piltover. I hope this guide helps you abuse her to the full potential. 
And remember, if you want some more in-depth tutorials, you can always hit up our coaches over at ProGads.com. And one last thing before you go, feel free to check out our Discord. The link for that is in the description below. We'd love to have you as part of our community, and I can't wait to see you guys back in the next video. But until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.